On the 17th of August in 2008, at Nick Diedrich's Technical High School in Krugersdorp, 18-year-old matric student Murnay Aramsa attacked four people with a samurai sword. At about 7 a.m., Aramsa arrived at school in his school uniform, wearing a brown mask and had black paint on his face. The mask was reported to be an imitation of the mask that Slipknot lead vocalist Corey Taylor wears, which Aramsa referred to as the maggot mask. However, some media outlets claim that the mask resembles Joey Jordison's mask. Nathan Jonas Jordison, also known as Joey, was an American musician. He was also the original drummer and co-founder of the heavy metal band Slipknot. At about 7.20 a.m., during assembly, Aramsa took out his 60cm samurai sword and slashed 16-year-old pupil Jock Praturias' neck, causing him to die immediately. Aramsa walked down a passage and slashed 17-year-old Stefan Bauer on the head and was immediately confronted by two school groundskeepers. Joseph Koriseng and Simon Manamela were both slashed and injured. Bauer, Koriseng and Manamela were immediately rushed to the hospital in serious condition. Two other masks were found in Aramsa's bag, a clown mask from a Hollywood costume store similar to Sean Crayon's, and a handmade paper mache mask with drilled holes painted with tribal marks. Three samurai swords were also found in his bag, which included a Sakizo ninja sword and a small katana. Aramsa's attacks came to a stop when he sat down on a brick wall and stuck the sword into the ground. He was laughing and reportedly said, I killed three, didn't I? His younger brother, Kornai, who was standing nearby, ultimately grabbed the sword and ran away with it. At about 7.45 a.m., Aramsa was escorted to the principal's office, where he reportedly asked the principal, What now, sir? And 15 minutes later, he was arrested by the police without argument. According to reports, Aramsa gave his full cooperation. Aramsa was temporarily held in custody of the Krugerstor police station. In the aftermath of the attacks, blame was put on Satanism, which Aramsa took an interest in. Aramsa claimed that Satan told him to do it, and that he followed the practice of Satanism. When police executed a search in Aramsa's room at 10 a.m. that morning, they found disturbing elements of Satanism that included an Ouija board and spellbooks. Detectives also searched the field adjacent to Aramsa's Krugersdorp West home and ended up confiscating his computer and more swords found in his bedroom. Freedom Front counselor Alex Robenheimer, who visited the school shortly after the attack, claimed that he saw traumatized children who told him that the suspect was high on drugs and had told him that Satan had ordered him to kill. Robenheimer said that his friend said that he was quiet, a polite boy who kept to himself, and never looked for trouble. They said that they all thought that he was a nerd. However, they saw him before the attacks and allegedly said that he was definitely in an altered state. They claimed that his eyes looked strange, stating that they could only see the whites thereof, and that his voice was different. Aramsa reportedly tested negative for drugs. Senior Superintendent Harald Labaskochny was responding to reports that Aramsa claimed that he did it because Satan told him to kill the children. Labaskochny said, Whenever there is a murder, people jump to conclusions, and usually they claim that God or Satan had told the killer to do it. These notions shouldn't be taken seriously because it is straightforward. Someone of their own free will can kill another person. Pierre Axtian, who was in charge of a school support network for children, said that satanic music was probably the cause of the attacks. He came here camouflaged as a guy from Slipknot. We know the wrong kind of music and drugs have bad effects. Young people need to be informed of the effects of bad satanic music, said Axtian. Reportedly, Aramsa was listening to the band before the attacks took place. Slipknot frontman Corey Taylor later issued a response to Aramsa's actions, stating, Obviously I am disturbed by the fact that people were hurt and someone died. As far as my responsibility for that goes, it stops there because I know our message is actually very positive. I'm not encouraging anybody to kill anyone. I encourage our fans to express themselves, to stick together, and to help each other. Shahida Omar, therapeutic manager at the Teddy Bear Clinic, said that the quote-unquote death mask and possible links to Satanism 
were, if at all true, simply a means of the boy gaining power and control. Omar added that when a child is rendered powerless, his way of attaining power is to identify with evil figures. This usually points to low self-esteem, low sense of self-worth, and attempts to solve the problem that results in quote-unquote maladaptive behavior manifestations. Autumn's parents claimed that their son was a victim of bullying throughout his school life, and that he suffered from low self-esteem and stress. On the 20th of August in 2008, Adamsa was charged with one count of murder and three counts of attempted murder at the Krugersdorf Magistrate's Court. Psychiatrist Dr. Malefe Litheku said Adamsa had told her that he'd seen a ghost in the field of the small holding which his parents rent. The ghost, he said, had told him to become a Satanist. Litheku recommended Adamsa to be sent for psychiatric evaluation. She apparently made a big question mark before the words personality disorder. He was later sent to Starkfontein Psychiatric Hospital for mental health evaluation. On the 25th of October, after two consecutive months of mental health evaluation and several postponements of the court date, Aramsa was ruled mentally fit by Magistrate Joachim Nurkia. The case was transferred to the South Gauteng High Court in Johannesburg for trial, in front of Judge Harardes Hotang. On the 14th of April in 2009, Aramsa pleaded guilty to all four charges. On the 10th of October, Mornay Aramsa was sentenced to 20 years in prison. Mornay's parents, Machil and Liza Aramsa, issued a formal apology to the Pretorius family after the murder of their son, Jock. People who love themselves don't hurt other people. The more they hate themselves, the more they want others to suffer. Until next time.